Star Wars is one of those properties that when it starts to really get into its uh, it, it, its groove, can be really amazing. And I feel like the idea of going back a hundred years before the rise of the Empire, a very specific time framing we'll find out later, is something that I feel like might be a safe bet, but at the same time, I'm hearing weird crosstalk uh, 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 criticisms, and we'll get into all that right now. You don't want to go anywhere, because we're going to talk about the series premiere. Two episodes dropped on Disney+. Plus. Uh, should they have been two? I don't know. We'll get into all that right now. What's up, my know-it-alls? It's time. We're here to talk about The Acolyte, Star Wars The Acolyte. And it's a, it's one of those shows that have we've heard about for years uh, at this point, starring Lee Jung-jae, Charlie Barnett, Rebecca Henderson, Manny Jacinto, Amanda Stenberg, and of course, Daphne Keene, with Carrie Ann Moss making an appearance. The Acolyte does not waste any time. It, it they, they get acolyte really quickly. So out the gate, you see that uh, we we we're we're literally laid into the front of this whole thing. Uh, Amanda Stenberg's May ends up meeting with uh, encountering uh, Carrie Ann Moss's Indara, and it's it's so we're being introduced to this like very kung fu esque fighting style involving the Force, which I thought was fine. Um, and uh, by the way, spoilers if you're not there because we're going to be as well on everything about this whole thing. And I feel like the at its core, this show wants to give us new things. However, and I'm going to do my best not to hold this against it, it's not what we were sold on. At least not yet. By that I mean, we're spending an awful lot of time with the Jedi in their side of things, and not a whole lot with the Sith slash dark side slash whatever. It was because we, we were sold this was going to be a show that would focus on the darker side. The problem is, it feels a lot like episode one in terms of tone. Um, and so, and by that, I just mean you're investigating some things. They're doing some stuff. You, you even see the trade federation people and, uh, you, the, our main character, uh, Amanda, St Amanda Stenberg plays, uh, not only May, she plays May's twin sister, who's a former Jedi Padawan who, uh, left or was kicked out of the order for whatever reason. May has a vendetta. You find out very quickly. There is a story about her childhood. They haven't given us all the thing, all the stuff, but her village was destroyed. Allegedly Saul and three other Jedi found, um, the found, uh, Amanda Stenberg, May's sister and thought she was it. May was presumed dead. May is the one you've seen with the knives and the whole bit. Her sister, her twin sister, who was a, who studied to be a Jedi briefly, um, is a she, she's basically doing astromech work. Yeah. So some of the up, ups and shut, ups and downs type type stuff. The show is not fast to get out of its own way, and by that I mean you have this scene, for instance, on the outside of a ship where May's sister is trying to go and fix something. And you have a fire in space. Fires require oxygen. There is no space in oxygen. There is no oxygen in space. And if it was, and the argument that, oh, well, it's coming from inside the ship doesn't actually work because if that were the case, then the flames would almost be like a torch, meaning going in one direction, which is the direction the oxygen's going in. It doesn't do that. It, these are wild flames as if there's a fire right there on the thing. It was very, it, was, it made me kind of go, huh? And again, this is the same universe that gives us sound effects and explosions in space. I get it. So, but it was one of those things that took me out of it real fast. And there are a lot of little beats like that that kind of make you go, were you guys thinking about what you were doing or was it you just being sloppy? Now, all that being said, there's a bunch of criticism on the internet that say, well, this was, you know, uh, we, we, why is it with the Jedi? If Star Wars isn't just about the Jedi. We've never gotten the Jedi. Some of you think we have because you've seen comic books or cartoons or whatever else or these other animations. But when it comes to actually Star Wars, We've never really gotten a whole bunch of Jedi. So, uh, the first, the only times we really have is literally the first three movies, and they're on their back heel, and they're fighting off, and they're and they're basically fighting for survival, and they're investigating stuff. But you don't get a whole lot of that. Past that, there's not a lot we've seen when it comes to them. Truthfully, I want Old Republic, but they're giving us. I guess this is a, allegedly parts of this is supposed to be High Republic. That's why they're wearing like white capes and the sort of orangey tan, dark tan, or whatever the vesty things. And then of course when they're traveling, they switch into the brown. Uh, the brown vest cloak things. The whole story is a revenge plot 
but we don't know anything about who the enemy is. And I feel like the shows think that they're creating a mystery box, but in truth, uh, it feels, it doesn't, I, I, it's not mystery boxed enough for me. We are thrown right into the middle of things, so it's wonderful. We don't have to wait for a whole lot of setup. But I kind of feel like we needed it. Because right now, this feels like it literally could go smack at, like you could butt it right up to uh, Phantom Menace and it would belong there. Now, I know it's 100 years before the rise of the Empire, which would be 100 years before Revenge of the Sith. And that brings up its own slew of issues and problems. But at the end of the day, I feel like a clearer idea of where we are would have been better. The other thing I don't like is the Jedi are stupid, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, I'm not a big fan of of, uh, of Yord. So apparently, after the situation with May and uh, uh, and Dara happens, they've put out like a equivalent of an APB, whatever else, for who someone who looks like May. So then immediately the Jedi see, they go, oh, this is this person, blah, blah, and they go and they pick up May's sister, the one who was a former Jedi who trained as a Padawan. She was Saul's Padawan, in fact. Now Saul uh, is Padawaning uh, Jackie Lon, who is Daphne Keene's character. She's the one with the orange skin affectations, and she's got little horns on the edge and stuff like that. Uh, and I feel like there's a world in which they could have less, less ham-fisted given us that transition. Because when Yord and his Padawan show up, they're very much like, no, you got to do the same ball, you're arrest, you're under arrest, this and that. Isn't this the person who allegedly murdered a Jedi master who arguably was vastly more capable than Yord or some of these other minor people? Why are you, one, acting tongue-in-cheek glib? Like, what? what is... The, the characterization doesn't fit. And I kind of sit here and I go, they didn't... And mind you, and they were dumb. Why would someone let you arrest them if they just committed a horrendous murder? Why would they just go back to life as normal in the place you, you're pretty capable of tracking them down in? The math doesn't add up for me. And I feel like it shouldn't have added up for the Jedi either. Saul is the one who's... Because even even uh, even when uh, Rebecca Anderson's Vernestra shows up and she's like, oh, well, you know, this should have been this and both. Like she's talking to him. There must be some mistake. The evidence against her is strong. What evidence? You have an eyewitness, but again, that's not the part I'm questioning. The part I'm questioning is, but your alleged culprit isn't afraid to do, like, is like, yeah, sure, take me, what, well, yeah, let's go. I trust the Jedi, I trust the system. Like, that doesn't sound like someone who's a cold-blooded killer to me. Another criticism I have is that the the episodes are each, like, just shy of uh, about 35 to 36 minutes each, and neither one felt like its own episode. These both felt like, one, they felt like it should have been connected. Two, it feels like it's connected to something else. Like, I have a feeling the third episode is going to give me a sense of completion to a specific piece of the story, whether it's act one or whatever you want to call it. And I and I, that's a mistake that has happened a lot in Lucasfilm of late, where they've been, they did it with Obi-Wan, they did it with Ahsoka. They take something that feels like it was a basically a six hour movie or a four or five hour movie and they chop it up to make it fit x number of episodes the issue with that is the episodes don't feel like complete episodes if you remember that service that came out quibi that was like 10 minute episodes blah blah the 10 minute chunks no, none of the storytellers thought about the fact that you have to give me something satisfying start to because you still have to keep the actual chemistry of a story so right now like even literally episode one finishes and feels like, it's not, while it's not a cliffhanger, it finished kind of cold. And I was like, well, thank God there's a second episode coming. So that's one reason why I'm doing my review as both parts. Uh, I've been trying to break up things that drop two episodes in the beginning, but at the same time, this needed it. Dare I say it probably needed to be a three episode premiere because the third episode I'm hoping is going to give me more to something to, to finish or wrap up that first act of whatever the story is. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts on that. Did you think that, like, how did you feel about the pacing? Um, the pacing seems off to me. Uh, I did love, we got to see some more. He, the basic gist of the thing is, May is hunting down these people that have something to do with her childhood. Don't know why. She holds them responsible. We don't know what they did. One of the people that she goes to hunt down is actually a, a Jedi named Master Tobin. And he's in this, he's like, he's like suspended. I guess for 10 years, he's been meditating. And as soon as he comes out of it, 
Uh, he looks at her and says, I'm sorry. We didn't know what we were doing. I've been waiting for you, mate. Forgive me. We thought we were doing the right thing. They're giving us pieces of something. And the problem is there's so much incongruity with what's happening that I don't, it, I'm not, I'm not pulled into that mystery as much as they want me to be because they're not giving me enough. They haven't given me enough of the existing story to understand why I care. And that's my big, that's the biggest problem. They're not telling me, they're not, there's too much dependence on the fact that we are Star Wars fans that I feel like it wasn't, it, it's not, it's not following the right course that it should be. Anyway. All right, guys. So at, at the end of the day, I feel like these episodes were a little bit all over the road. It is establishing something that I'm enjoying. I love seeing the lightsabers. I love seeing the, but at the same time, I, the Jedi seem dense and a little thick. And I'm hoping that's not the, I feel like it's a misinterpretation by whoever wrote this. Like somebody doesn't really understand how, show me you don't know how Jedi work without saying you don't know how Jedi work. And it it's like, it's. It, I feel like they took the, the cop position similar to how Qui-Gon did in the in Phantom Menace. And they tried to sort of move along that same sort of line. All right, and of course, Gary and Moss is gone. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm hoping we're gonna get some kind of a flashback that'll actually tell us what happened that will involve Gary and Moss's character, uh, Master Tobin, all these, everybody who she's going after. And the big thing is also, May clearly is being trained and she's being referred to by the unknown faceless person as Acolyte. The Jedi live in a dream, steel or laser are no threat to them, but an acolyte. An acolyte kills without a weapon. An acolyte kills the dream. They're, they're setting up a new type of mythology at this moment, and that's fine, whatever. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hang on tight. We're gonna see. I'm gonna look at them, I'm gonna look and see. But there you go. Now you know. And if you have the battle, you're halfway being normal yourself. So, what is the normal index for this? Two episode premiere. Okay, let's be real for a second. It there's some work that needs to happen. Okay, it's this is new material, so we're not even judging you based on the things of the past. Ahsoka was being judged on Clone Wars and those series things and what it was doing and the story it was telling. Oh, uh, Kenobi was being judged on a its own merit, but also where it exists in time, relationship to everything else, and and the feel and general tone overall. Same with Book of Boba Fett. Same with Mandalorian season two and three. So what? But what this has going for it is this has everything Mandalorian season one had going for it, which is this is new territory. We haven't blazed this territory yet. Uh, am I am I keen on what they're calling the High Republic? Not really, not at the moment, because at the moment it feels an awful lot like the regular Republic. Like there's nothing really separating this from at least in the comic books of old. You had the Jedi with the power pack attached to their lightsaber, something that said this is another time. This could be yesterday when you're comparing it to the original, to the prologue, to the prequel trilogy. So uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on that. All that being said, my vote, is, uh, my rating rather, the Noir Index rating for this episode for me is a seven and a half out of 10. All right, guys, comment below. Let me know what you thought. I would absolutely would love to hear more about your ideas and thoughts regarding all of this. Do me a favor, if you're into some Star Wars stuff, here's a playlist I did for Ahsoka. We'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And uh, let's get ready and get exciting. That right there is going to be a video talking specifically about the state of things in Star Wars. All right, guys, I can't wait. We'll talk again very, very soon. Never forget, everyone loves a Dota.